Dina Koto Katoa, no mai, haramai, and welcome to today's special Creative New Zealand online hui, hosted in partnership with PANS and Auckland Live. Ko Delina Wihi Peihana Toku Ingoa, no ngati tu korehe me ngati Rokawa Aho. I'm pleased to be here today to facilitate today's conversation with our panel and in discussion with those of you joining us. Today, the team from Creative New Zealand will be sharing their recently announced 12 month investment plan and their continuing support for the sector following their phase one COVID-19 emergency response. For this hui, we also have Platform <coughs> Interpreting New Zealand, who will be interpreting for us in New Zealand sign language live throughout this session. I will begin today's session with a karakia me karakia tato. Tu tawa mai i runga, tu tawa mai i raro, tu tawa mai i roto, tu tawa mai i waho. Kia tau ai te mauri tu, te mauri ora, ki te katoa, haumi e hui e, tai fie. Kia ora anō and welcome. Thank you to those of us who are joining us on Facebook Live and YouTube. Today, I'm beaming in from the Creative New Zealand office in Wellington. I'm privileged to be sitting in front of this beautiful artwork called Cairo Museum by Richard Killeen. And today I'm joined by a panel from the Creative New Zealand team, Kath Cardiff, Richard Knowles, Manager of Funding Services, and Liz Cleary, Manager of Investment Services. Today's hui is to share information with you. So if you have any questions for our panelists, please enter them in the comments on Facebook and YouTube, and I can ask these directly to our panelists for you. Without any further ado, I'd like to welcome our first panelist for this morning, Kath Cardiff. Kath joined Creative New Zealand in 2000. She has been involved in the performing arts since studying ballet from five years old. This led to a career in dance that spanned 20 years and included periods as artistic director for Lim's Dance Company and resident choreographer at the Mercury Theatre in Auckland. Kath moved into producing, working with many companies and artists. And before joining Creative New Zealand, Kath also worked at Auckland Live as a programmer for theatre, dance and contemporary music. Kath joined Creative New Zealand as an advisor, dance and theatre, and has moved on to hold a number of senior manager managerial roles within the agency, including in the audience and market development, capability building and international programs. Kia ora Kath, welcome. Kia ora Dolina. Tēnā koutou katoa, nā mihi nui ki a koe Dolina, and welcome to everybody who's joined us this morning. So um, we'll get right into it. Um, I'm beaming in from my living room, which is now my office in Thorndon and Wellington, and it's a beautiful day, the sun is shining. Um, so I hope it's shining wherever you are as well. So as you know, Creative New Zealand has announced further funding to support the arts sector to adapt to these uncertain and unpredictable times that we find ourselves in. And today we'd like to cover the key points relating to this 12 month investment plan, which is designed to cover the period between now and June, 2021. During our phase one program, our focus was totally on emergency support for artists and arts organizations so they could survive. With New Zealand's shift to the alert level one, which is unique in the world, I think, we are also able to shift our attention to not only survival, but to adaption and to a new and changed environment, which is still very dynamic. Um, we also want to find new ways to engage New Zealanders with the arts. Um, as you know, the purpose of our act is to, to promote support and encourage the arts for the benefit of all New Zealanders. So we want to increase our capacity and the sector's capacity to engage with a, with a more diverse and um, deeper level of engagement with New Zealanders who want to experience the arts. 
And that has been demonstrated, I think, throughout both the lockdown period and the period in between then and now. So we intend to devote the majority of the $25 million of new funding that we have been given by the government to this investment plan over the next 12 months. And the plan covers adapting our regular arts grants program, offering many of the special opportunities for artists that we had to suspend due to COVID-19 and continuing our support for key arts organizations the Creative Community Scheme, and adding new programs, including one that encourages regional arts development. This investment has been carefully considered to align with our strategic outcomes and our existing strategy documents. These are the investment strategy, Te Ha O Nga Toi Māori Art Strategy, and the Pacific Art Strategy. As the art sector has had to adapt, so has Creative New Zealand. So all will not be the same as before. We've incorporated some of the key learnings from our phase one offering based on feedback from the sector. And one of these benefits, which we will retain is faster, much faster decision-making on the results of funding proposals. This allows both us and you to be more dynamic and flexible in your approach to the situation we find ourselves in. However, we are also keenly aware that even with additional investment, we will not be able to support everything that people want. The demand for funding far outstrips the available money, and we want to be as honest as possible about that, so people have a clear idea about their chances of success. There will continue to be many fine proposals that we will have to turn down, and this should not be taken as a reflection on their quality or their value, but simply hard decisions that we have to make to prioritise within our, our resource base. We have developed a 12-month funding calendar, which is available on our website to help you plan. This includes opening, closing and notification dates. I encourage you to carefully read the eligibility and other criteria before you apply to give you the best chance possible in this highly contested environment. In conclusion, before I hand back to Delena, I'd like to emphasize that we are also totally committed to engaging closely with the community, the arts community, and we will be holding more online hui with targeted groups Toi Māori, Pacific Arts Community, and our investment clients over the coming weeks. Our amazing comms team will be promoting these opportunities via all our regular platforms. So do stay in touch. Thank you very much. And I look forward to answering as many of your questions as possible this morning and over the next few weeks as we progress. I'm very pleased to be able to um, join this panel with my colleagues from Creative New Zealand, Richard Knowles and Liz Cleary, but I'll hand back to Delina now so she can continue with her introductions. Nā mihi nui kia koutou. Kia ora, Kath. Thank you very much. And I think we'll jump straight into it. I'm sure all of you out there are very excited to hear about the funding opportunities and Richard Knowles is going to join us to talk to us about the Arts Grants and the new Annual Arts Grants program. So I will just like to introduce Richard. Richard manages the funding services team, which is responsible for the administration of all funding programs other than the investment funding, from application advice to post application feedback and acquittal. Richard graduated from the University of Auckland with a Bachelor of Music and had a career in both orchestra and opera management in the United Kingdom and Australia before moving into venue management at London's Royal Albert Hall and Southbank Centre. He then spent seven years as Head of Visitor Services at Buckingham Palace. Richard returned to New Zealand in early 2017 as Executive Director of New Zealand Opera and joined Creative New Zealand in 2018. Kia ora, Richard. Welcome. Kia ora, Delina. 
Uh, Morena Koto, a uh, co Richard Knowles Toku Ingoa, co Kaipakahere Ratunga Putea. So I'm in the Waiheki room here at Creative New Zealand's offices in Tamaki Makoto. Sadly, not as sunny here as in Poneki, but um, happy to be back in the office after quite a long lockdown period that we've all been experiencing. Um, so as Delina mentioned, I'm going to talk to you about arts grants and the annual arts grants that uh, are opening on the 3rd of August. Um, many of you will know that in March we suspended arts grants and sadly didn't get to open the annual arts grants when we launched our emergency response program. So we're really excited to open these programs now. Um, both open on the 3rd of August alongside a number of other special opportunities and you can see those full details on the funding calendar on the website, as Kath mentioned earlier. So talking about arts grants firstly, um, whilst delivering the emergency program, we learned a lot about what's important to the sector and what works well for them. Uh, so we've taken some of those great lessons and continued them in our planning um, for the next phase of delivery, particularly around the arts grants. Um, and thinking mostly around the desire to have faster decision making, as Kath touched on. So we're going to continue that um, in the arts grants rounds so that um, there are more of those rounds and uh, faster decision making so people can plan much more flexibly. So arts grants is our broadest funding opportunity and it offers short term project funding for New Zealand artists, arts practitioners and arts organisations. It's open to anybody uh, other than our CNZ investment clients, but there are certain eligibility criteria, including a track record um, of experience and success as expected. Uh, we have four key program purposes uh, that we have had in the past. Uh, so we're looking for projects that firstly support more sustainable careers, projects that encourage innovation in New Zealand arts, projects that support the development of arts practice, and projects that provide opportunities for diverse communities to access and participate in high quality arts experiences. So the big change is that we're going to be offering eight funding rounds from August 2020 uh, until June 2021 with a three week decision making process after each closing date. So much faster than we've been able to do in the past. Um, in order to notify those outcomes more quickly, though, we have introduced a cap of 200 applications per round. So the round will close when that cap has been reached. If it's not, the closing date is advertised. But if you've started an application but haven't submitted and the cap is reached, then you can copy that application into the next round once that round opens. So we're inviting people to submit two applications across the year, but just one per round and your project needs to be completed within 15 months of the notification date. Just to note, you can apply for a personal project for your own arts practice, as well as be a lead applicant on an organization's project. So the funding caps, you can apply from $5,000 up to $75,000, and we'll continue to have specific funding pools for general arts, Ngātoi Māori arts, and Pacific arts. The same assessment process will be used as we have in the past, with each application having two assessments and a panel meeting being held for each round. So to move on to annual arts grants, this is something that we've been designing for a while and hope to open, but um, was delayed, but here we go now. Um, so this is a new fund that we've developed to give more flexibility and more certainty of support over a longer time frame. It's specifically for individuals or organizations that have a track record of successfully de delivering projects with Creative New Zealand funding, and therefore presenting a regular uh, or continuous program of activity and or producing or presenting a significant event or a project. Uh, the same eligibility criteria uh, remains as for arts grants, but one key criteria is about those who are actually able to apply. So in order to apply, um, we're looking for a track record of success with funding from Creative New Zealand. So in the three years of 2017 to 2019, you need to have received four grants from us, which have been successfully acquitted. Or if you have received funding through our investment program over the last three years and no longer receiving it, you're also eligible. And lastly, if you expressed an interest in joining our developmental program, Te Pūwaitanga, earlier this year, 
uh, which is now suspended, you're also able to apply in this year. Just to note, investment clients are not eligible to apply. So applications can be up to $150,000 per project or program with a minimum of $75,000 if the application is for one significant project. We're offering one round in 2020, opening on the 3rd of August, uh, and that's for a program or a project for 12 months activity to be delivered within the 15 months of notification date. Given the size of the projects, we're going to take a little bit longer to um, assess and decide on success, uh, and that will be about four and a half weeks after the closing date. So still a very quick time turnaround. And a similar process for assessment and decision making will take place as it did for arts grants. So just in closing, uh, to summarize, both of those funds open on the 3rd of August, alongside the special opportunities. Uh, full eligibility criteria and specific, specific detail of the funds will be available on the web page once we open those. And we have some handy resources for you to look at in the meantime. The funding calendar, as Kath mentioned, um, a whole raft of funding guidelines and support material that you can read about how to make an application and what makes a good application and what's eligible. And we've developed frequently asked questions about these two funds and other funds that we're opening, uh, which we'll keep adding to after today's HUI uh, and going forward with the other uh, Zono and Zui that we're going to be doing over the next few weeks. Um, if you need further support or uh, have some more questions, please don't hesitate to contact one of our funding advisors uh, via email funding at creativenewzealand.govt.nz. Uh, thanks for listening. I look forward to taking any questions later on in the hui, but back to you now, Dolina. Namenu hui. Kia ora, Richard. Thank you very much. We have had a couple of questions come in, but we will listen to the uh, rest of the opportunities that Creative New Zealand have for us. And then after all our panelists have spoken, I will be asking your questions. So I'd like to now pass back to Kath, who is going to talk to us about the Ngātoi Arohe Regional Arts Fund. Thanks, Kath. Thanks, Delina. Um, so um, very excited to announce this brand new funding opportunity. Um, the amount that you can request under this fund is up to 150,000 per application. It's for individual artists, arts practitioners, groups and organisations located outside of the main centres of Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch. And it, it can include arts organisations, iwi, hapu, local or regional authorities, other presenters, for example, marae, local venues, galleries and libraries, community and private trusts, or regional arts development agencies. Organisations in the Kahikatea or Tōtara investment programmes and who are located outside of those main centres can also apply to this fund. So the key points are, the purpose of the fund is to incentivise local and regional stakeholder investment in the development and presentation of local arts activity outside the main centres. It's a new opportunity that we did launch earlier in the year, but we had to suspend it together with other funding opportunities while we focused on our emergency response. And we're really thrilled to be able to reintroduce this fund and provide additional support for the arts in the regions. So this fund aims to increase investment in the arts by local and regional partners. Um, it aims to develop high quality arts by, with and for local and regional communities and increase engagement, attendance and or participation in high quality arts by local and regional communities outside of the main centres. So applications for projects must focus on collaborative high quality new work or high quality arts experiences by, with and for the local community. They need to provide evidence of new investment in the project by local stakeholders and they need to include an authentic engagement with the community as part of the project, for example, consultation, research and delivery. Projects need to start after the 27th of November 2020 and be completed by the 27th of November 2021. You can only apply once to this round and there will only be one round in 2020. Creative New Zealand's Tōtoro and Kākātea investment clients can also apply, 
and be involved in a project, providing that the project meets all those other criteria and is not included in their currently funded annual program as agreed and supported by their contract with Creative New Zealand. The details for assessment and decision making are still to be finalised, but will be consistent with our contestable, other contestable funding rounds in that we will be using external peer assessors and a panel meeting will also be held. Um, so that's it for that one. Um, I don't have the closing, the opening and closing dates um, in front of me, um, but they will be in that funding calendar that's on our website. Back to you, Delina. Got a Kath. Thank you. That's very exciting to hear about that grant opportunity, and I'm sure there are some amazing projects that will be created with local communities that come out of this funding initiative. Now I'd like to move on and introduce our third panellist for this morning, Liz Cleary. Liz is the manager for investment services. So Liz manages the team responsible for all aspects of the multi-year Toi Tōtara, Haimata and Toi Ukahikatea investment programs and the Creative Communities Scheme, as well as the Arts Practice Directors. Since March, Liz has been seconded to manage the CNZ response to COVID-19. Liz joined Creative New Zealand in 2018 to lead the development of the Te Ha o Ngā Toi Creative New Zealand's Ngā Toi Māori strategy, and then the implementation of changes to the Arts Grants Programme. Liz has experience in the education and Treaty of Waitangi sectors in various roles including program management, investment and innovation, strategy development, business performance and relationship management. Welcome Liz. Tēnā koutou. Uh, ko Liz Cleary tōko ingoa, nō no wiwi, nō no kāraki o ko tūpuna, i tapu ake au ki tamaki makaurau, i noho ana au ki te whanganui atara. Ko tēnei taku mihi, ki nga tangata whenua o te rohi nei, ka mihi hoki o ki nga tohu o te rohi nei. No reira, tēnā koutou katoa. So thanks, Delina, for the intro, and um, thanks also to PANS and Auckland Live for the opportunity to share the offerings for the investment clients for the coming year. Now, there are two new funds available for investment organisations I'd like to talk with you about today. That's the Adaptation Fund and the Capability Fund. Both of these funds will open mid-August, close in late September, and you'll be notified in early November. And for both of these funds, you'll need to deliver the activities by the end of the 2021 calendar year. Now, as Kath noted earlier, we're still finalizing some of the details around activities, guidance, and assessment criteria. So today, I just wanted to give you a, a heads up of the purpose and the timing, so you can plan that and understand where activities will be coming in the year and start to think about what this might mean for you with the rest of your activities that you're doing as part of your funding contract. So we'll be publishing all of the information you'll need ahead of the funds opening and we'll be holding a dedicated ZOE for investment organisations in August once the funds have opened, have opened so we can talk through any specific part I that you have then when all the information is available for you. And as always, I say, if you're an investment organization, I encourage you to get in touch with your lead advisor, who'll be able to talk through the detail of how it might apply to the specific needs of your organizations. So I'll start with the Adaptation Fund. Uh, as a short uh, overview, the Adaptation Fund is a new fund to encourage new ways of working in the changed environment and to support new and adapted organizational models in response to COVID-19. This could be about your organization's business model and or artistic practice. It's all about new ways of engaging with audiences and participants, such as, for example, uh, increasing digital literacy, such as digitization of analog content uh, and the use of digital technologies to make and distribute work. It could be about transforming organizational models or about increased public access to the arts through the use of digital technologies and solutions. Now, it's important to note that if you apply to the Adaptation Fund, um, any proposed activity must be in addition to what's in your program and budget. 
So to make sure these line up, if you do choose to apply to the adaptation fund, you'll need to submit your program and budget at the same time. If we turn to the capability fund, this is about supporting organisations to address their development priorities in 2021 to increase the sustainability of their business in response to COVID-19. For the Capability Building Fund, organisations can apply for costs of up to $30,000, including uh, consultancy and training fees towards increasing their capability in critical areas such as governance, risk management, business continuity, audience or community engagement, income diversification and financial planning. As with the Adaptation Fund, any proposed activity must be in addition to what's in your program and budget. So again, to make sure these line up, if you do choose to apply to the Capability Building Fund, you'll need to submit your program and budget at the same time. Now, because the investment organisations can only apply for one fund, either the Adaptation or the Capability Fund, it's important to know the difference between the two. So what's the difference? Uh, in short, a key focus of the Adaptation Fund is supporting digitalization, and the Capability Fund is to support organisations to increase their capability in critical areas such as listed before, governance, risk management, engagement, income diversification, and financial planning. There is a maximum of $30,000 for the Capability Fund, and the Adaptation Fund, the amount will be uh, allocated as per application and organization need and description. The other important difference is that the adaptation fund is only available to investment organizations and the capability fund is available to investment organizations plus the nine Māori and Pacifica led organizations that expressed an interest in taking part in Te Pūwaitanga of March this year. So that's my very quick overview for you of the new adaptation and capability funds for investment organisations and for the capability fund, the nine organisations that expressed an interest in Te Waitanga. Now, I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions and I'm really happy to ask them for you today in chat, but um, as we're aware that for our 83 investment organisations, there are 83 different and specific sets of circumstances for each one of those. So remember to get in touch with your advisor after all the detailed activities, guidance and assessment criteria are announced in a few weeks. Thanks, back to you, Delina. Thank you, Liz. It's wonderful to hear about these new opportunities for our investment clients. And as you mentioned, there will be a specific hui or zono uh, for those clients as well, where they can get in touch to ask more questions. As, as you can see, there are some very specific criteria for each grant. But now I'd like to move on to the questions which have been coming through. Thank you very much to everyone who's been sending through a question. I'm going to start with just kind of a general one, a question for you, Richard, about will you be continuing with the peer assessment model? Yes, um, no changes there. Um, we will have two assessments for every application in arts grants, uh, possibly three for annual arts grants. We're just finalising that now. Um, and as before, if people apply under Ngātoi Oroi, uh, sorry, uh, Ngātoi Māori or Pacific Arts, then their application will be assessed by uh, a Māori assessor or a Pacific assessor. So no change with that with peer assessors. All applications to Creative New Zealand are assessed by external peer assessors. Thank you, Richard. I've got another question, which is just about track record, which you've spoken about earlier today, do people who have never received Creative New Zealand funding before still have a chance of receiving funding through one of these grant opportunities? Would you like to answer that one? Yes, well, yeah, thanks, Dolina. Um, of course, no problem at all. Um, we were really thrilled about how many new people came to Creative New Zealand during the emergency response program. Uh, and the key question there is having a great project and having a track record of success um, that you can show to us. Um, it doesn't matter if you've never come to us before, um, if you can show those things and can provide us with a great um, application, then the, you have just as much chance as anybody else. Thanks, Delina. Thank you. Another question for you, Richard. Can applications that weren't successful in the arts continuity grants rounds apply and be considered in the annual in the arts grants 
Uh, no is the easy quick answer, unfortunately. Um, as you might imagine, that was a kind of an emergency setting that we were in at that stage um, and offering that program specifically for that period with a very specific time frame until the 30th of September for delivery of a project. So um, we need to be offering opportunities for new applicants and new types of projects um, in uh, the general arts grants going forward. So the only difference, I suppose, is that um, we do allow opportunities for um, a different phase of a project to be applied for. Um, so that's a possibility, but unfortunately no resubmissions, which I suspect is what people are keen to understand. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to have a little reminder for our panelists that as we have the New Zealand Sign Language Interpreters Sorry. with us today, we're just going to make an effort to speak a little bit more slowly so our interpreters can keep up with all the information. But I've got another question for you, Richard, <laughs> which is with the 200 application limit per round for the arts grants with the eight rounds in the year, what, how is, is there a different cap for each pool? For example, the general, if you're applying to general Māori or Pacifica, or is the cap 200 overall? How will you split the allocations per funding type? Uh, thanks, Galina. Um, sorry for speaking quickly. I get excited about these things. Um, so I'll go slow if I can. Um, yes, we've had to think about how we can manage uh, the number of applications that we can process at any given time. So we've set that 200 um, cap per um, round in order to be able to give um, a much faster notifying process. Um, at the moment, the plan is that the first 200 applications that come in um, are those that have been successful, obviously um, to, be, to be submitted, uh, regardless of funding pool. Um, we have um, a budget for the whole year, which we are going to split equally across um, the eight funding rounds. However, um, and that is split down under the three uh, funding pools as well. So that can be a little bit fluid depending on um, how many we get from each funding pool into each uh, round. But um, the key thing for us obviously will be to get the message out to all of our communities um, about the timeliness of, of applying. And we have our Zui and Zono um, specifically targeting different communities so that they know what is required. Um, they know the deadlines and we're encouraging everybody to apply um, as soon as their project is, is ready in the right uh, funding round. Um, and the thing is, if people don't make the, next, the first funding round, then the next funding round opens just before the, um, the one before closes. So there is always something that people can apply to. Um, so we aren't specifically splitting out the 200 across pools. Okay, thank you. I think that will be a very important point for everybody is that it's first in, first served. Yeah. Um, however, you are only able to, as I understand it, apply twice. Out of, you can't apply each round, so eight times Correct. as an individual, you can only apply twice across the eight rounds. But yes, I'm sure that is going to provide a little bit of anxiety for people who will be anxious about missing out. So I think we can just try and get the message out as much as possible to people to get their applications in quickly. I think probably an example of the last round of the arts continuity grants, there was an extraordinary amount of applications appeared to have gone into the last round mm -hmm. that maybe could have gone in earlier. So it's just um, some good messaging if everybody out there can share with their own, with their artists and their own communities about the importance of getting your application in as soon as possible. And now I'm going to move to a question for you, Kath which is just about asking if you can explain the rationale for needing to have received at least four grants from Creative New Zealand's contestable funding program in the calendar years 2017 to 2019 as eligibility for the annual arts grants. Okay, good question. So um, because that is a substantial commitment on our part, um, $150,000 over 12 months is a, is a, a big investment. Um, we want to make sure that the organisations that apply have had an um, experience of delivering successful grants and acquitting them in the past. 
So it's about a level of maturity in terms of the organization or the individual, and also a track record with us of success. So it's um, likely to be that, you know, there are much fewer organizations in this pool than there are in arts grants. So I think we're looking at accepting something like 1600 applications um, for arts grants. And in order for us to manage our budget, we need to have an understanding of about how many eligible um, applicants would apply for annual arts grants. So we've done our modeling based on those um, organizations and individuals who were regularly applying through our rounds and also regularly being successful. And this program is designed for them. Thank you, Kath. Our question, is there a cap on the annual arts grants? The, the dollar amount is $150,000. And in terms of how many applications you'll accept? There's only one application per round. There's only one round per year. Okay. One round per year, one shot. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. Now, but, but, sorry, I'll just add to that. If, if you were unsuccessful um, in the, the, that one round, which is the, the, the first half of this the last half of this calendar year, you can still then reapply into the regular arts grants um, in, the, in the calendar year beginning 2021. Great, thank you, Kath. Uh, moving on to a question also for you, Kath, but with regard to the Ngātoi Aruhe Fund. Is this fund open to groups who are based in a main centre but are wanting to create a new project to be delivered in a region? Yeah, that's that's a really good question. Um, I don't think that's the intention, but I don't want to say never say never. So the intention of this fund is to incentivize um, projects in the regions. Um, so our preference is that the applications come from those regions. But if that proposal came, came from a, uh, an artist or community in that region who wanted to work with, say, a group that was based somewhere else and needed that group in order to be able to deliver their project, um, I'm hesitant to say that that would be ineligible at this stage, but it would not be our preference. And another question here with regard to that fund. Um, you mentioned community consultation. Could you give an example of what you mean by that, how you think that might work? Okay, so I'm thinking of a situation where a locally based arts organization, a venue or a marae might want to apply to this fund for commissioning new work. Um, there needs to be some evidence of consultation with partners in the region or the arts community in that region to know that there's support for that proposal so that it's got the backing of either the local authority or community trust or other parts of the community who have some sort of investment in the project and that investment could be financial it could be in kind um, it could be just in terms of support or mandate but we need to know that we're investing in projects that are going to actually be up, have good uptake within the community in which they're placed. So that's what we mean by that. And evidence of that having of the proposal having that support is going to be really important for success in that in that round, in that fund. Sorry. Another another related question: If the fund requires evidence of other organisations' commitment. What portion of funding are you, is Creative New Zealand expecting to put in versus kind of local yeah. contribution financially? So this is really interesting because I think when we first um, were designing this program, this fund, um, we were thinking that we wanted to do a matched funding offer. So like for like. However, we are very flexible on that now because of the situation with COVID-19. So um, we know that a lot of um, communities um, in the regions um, have been um, heavily hit by either loss of tourism dollars or their local authority 
has um, lost income. And so we don't want to impose that burden quite so strictly. So we are looking for evidence of support, but as I said, that can be in kind. So it could be the donation of the venue, for instance, which is worth something to that community, but not in terms of us being very strict about the dollars matching. Um, but some evidence of how the community or other partner organizations are supporting the project is going to be mandatory. Thank you. I've got another question that's come in, which is a really great question that I'll ask you, Kath, not related to that fund, but about the emergency relief grant. Are there any plans to reintroduce the emergency relief grant to complement the extended wage subsidy scheme? No, I, I'm sorry, we, we're not going to, to redo that. Um, there, are, there are several reasons for that. Um, that was an exceptional response to an exceptional circumstance. Um, and it's not something that we are kind of geared up to do. Uh, so our agency is primarily about arts development. And so that's where our focus will go rather than income support. Um, which we consider to be the responsibility of other arms of government and, and which they do extremely well. Um, so no, we won't be re-offering that type of support. Thank you, Kath. Liz, I'm going to come to you with some questions about the investment scheme opportunities. But the first one, I realise that we are sitting here talking about investment clients, but perhaps that's a a um, definition that not everybody understands. So could you please explain to us the definition of an, of an investment organisation? Sure. The investment organisations oh, are 83 of uh, large multi-year funded organisations by CNZ. Um, every couple of years, the uh, Arts Council re-looks at its portfolio and looks at what the strategic gaps are and strategic needs as we move forward and then applications are invited from organisations to take part in becoming a Tortora or Kahekatea client. So these are our large organisations uh, across different art forms and across different parts of the country who we have a multi-year investment in. So I see there's also a question about how do you become an investment client? So I might as well hit that one while I'm here. So um, the first step to becoming an investment organization is taking part in the Tapua Waitanga program. And you'll heard that I mentioned that before. So again, every couple of years after the council has uh, taken a look at what our portfolio looks like strategically, it may decide to open up Tapua Waitanga for specific needs to address specific gaps. And earlier this year, we opened up to Puaitanga for expressions of interest from Māori and Pacific-led organisations to take part. So once you are accepted to take part into Puaitanga, you run some capability building activities. And at the end of that, should you meet the uh, criteria, then the next time that the Arts Council decides to open up the investment portfolio, uh, you'll be invited to take part in that if you've committed, if you've completed to Pō Waitanga. Thank you, Liz. Also, just another question for you, Liz, about someone understanding the suitability of the fund, either fund to apply to, the Adaptation Fund or the Capability Fund. Can you advise on whether the Adaptation Fund is focused only on digital activity? The key focus of the Adaptation Fund is to support digitalization. Um, if what you would like to apply for is something, for example, governance, risk management, engagement, then the capability building fund is for you. However, if there's another area that you think that you might would require some capability building in or some adaptation other than that, I really encourage you to talk to your lead advisor, especially once all the guidance has come out with the final activities in there. And then we can uh, work together to understand which of those may fit your circumstances. Thank you, Liz. Richard, I'm coming back to you with some more questions about the arts grants. And this is about what are the options for a new organization that was born out of a COVID-19 response to work on behalf of an entire arts discipline in new ways? Is an arts grant the sort of only option within these new funding rounds that they could apply for? 
Thanks, Delina. Um, yes, I think that's the only um, vehicle uh, for something like that. Um, we welcome applications from arts collectives, arts organizations, and I'm sure everyone's aware that through um, lockdown and the first phase that we've been offering, everyone's working in different ways and have been working um, with different partners. So I think it would be um, fine for them to come into arts grants if they could show that as a collective or as a, a new group, um, they could still show that those that were taking part were had a track record of success uh, and that it was a good project. Um, I think depending on what that is and the discipline that that, that the question is, is around, um, it can be considered and we should probably have a conversation with that that um, person, that group, uh, so that we can give them the best advice we can, but I, I don't see a problem with that. Thanks, Richard. And can you apply for the types of things outlined in the Capability Fund and the Adaptation Fund within an annual arts grant if you're not an investment client? Mm -hmm. So if, if mm -hmm. these these things that those grants have been set up to kind of address or encourage, but you're not an investment client, would they be a good case for an arts grant? Um, yes, I think that the program purposes that we have set for arts grants, which remain the same for annual arts grants, are really broad um, intentionally. Um, obviously, if they can um, speak to those, uh, those four program purposes, which are supporting more sustainable careers, uh, encouraging innovation in New Zealand arts, um, supporting the development of arts practice, um, and providing opportunities for diverse communities to access and participate, um, then I think that would be absolutely fine. Um, we in, we're in kind of intentionally broaden those so that um, people can be flexible with their projects um, and, and come in with something that fits neatly in there, but still develop, deliver what they'd like to. Thank you. Another question for you, Richard, mm. regarding applications that have been declined previously. Yeah. Is it possible to come to Creative New Zealand for feedback on those applications? So when people are reframing or thinking mm. about applying again, they've got some feedback, especially as Kath was mentioning earlier, often it's not the um, mm -hmm. value of the, of the project that is the reason you've been declined. It might be just as simple as there wasn't enough funding in that particular round. Yes, that's totally understandable um, and it breaks our heart that we can't support every project that is that is excellent. Um, what we did for arts continuity grants was um, we weren't able to offer tailored feedback because of the volume that we were going through and the fast pace that we were processing. Um, where we have had some requests, uh, we have been able to give the assessor comments um, to applicants, which they have found really valuable. Um, and so we would continue to be able to do that. I, I don't see a problem with that. Um, just noting that that project, had it been declined, um, isn't eligible to be coming into arts grants. But I, I totally understand that some feedback would still be really welcomed. So we can still do that, yes. Thank you. And a final question for you for now. <laughs> um, you've spoken a little bit about this before in terms of track record, but we've had yeah. a question here about what advice or tips would you give to recent graduates and emerging artists writing applications? How does a recent graduate present track record of success? Yeah, that's difficult, isn't it? Um, and I think what would be good is for people to have a look on um, our guidelines and our funding guidelines that we have. There are specific um, track record requirements for each of the art forms that we support. But generally speaking, um, you need to be able to display that you've got recognition from your peers or experts, uh, that you have achieved a level of critical or sales success in your arts practice, um, or that you've had specialized training or practical experience in your art form. Um, so I think the key thing probably is to think about um, the work that you've been doing, who you've been doing it with, um, what support you will have around the project if you're wanting to come and apply for us, uh, for funding from us. And um, if you're at all unsure, perhaps um, make contact with one of the funding advisors and they'll be able to give you some, some tips and some guidance about um, whether you're quite there yet or what might be you able to, what you might be able to do in order to do that. The other thing that um, we'd encourage as we talked about was working with other um, practitioners and collectives 
So you could join in another project um, that somebody's working on and use that as an example of um, something that you've done, which is um, supporting your arts practice and giving that sort of recognition um, and that experience that we're looking for. Thanks, Richard. I've got a question which I'll um, think I'll pass your way, Kath. It's mm -hmm. a specific, specific question about New Zealand writers. So someone has commented that New Zealand writers earn on average $12,000 annually with royalties paid many months after receipt and recently with speaker engagements cancelled and postponed. Many were unable to access the emergency relief funding. What support will be available to writers in this contestable funding? Right, well, first of all, I'm highly sympathetic to that plight. And I don't think that's just writers that are in that situation. I think there are many, many practitioners, um, including in the wider sector of film and television, um, who aren't able to generate the income that they previously were able to do. Um, and that's um, a desperately unfortunate result of the situation that we find ourselves in. However, we're not able to guarantee support to, to guarantee income support um, for individuals um, or, or, or even organizations. We invest in outcomes. We invest in the actual activity that results in you know, the activity that, that the arts practice that is, is relevant. So for writers, we have many opportunities for residencies, um, fellowships, um, individual grants to write, um, they are all eligible activities within our arts grants programs. Um, so I'd encourage you to have a look at the section on um, literature, which is on our website as to what is actually eligible. But yes, many writers do apply for funding to write books and novels um, and or other, other you know, nonfiction various genre of, of writing and, and, you know, we fund a lot of that over the years um, or have funded a lot and will continue to do so. It, it's not guaranteed, obviously, because it's a contestable process. Thanks, Kath. Um, another related question, will equal consideration be given to applications proposing outcomes in print and or and online or virtual publication rather than physical exhibition or performance. So this kind of again, I think relates to the cap on the applications will the because I suppose it will depend on how many applications you're receiving from each art form within that framework. Yeah, there's there's no um, there's no bias towards either the analog experience, for want of a better description, or the digital experience. We just want to make it clear that we are open to receiving proposals, particularly in this scenario, for increased digital um, capability and delivery, because it's, it's a methodology for delivering um, outcomes to, to audiences and participants that is, it was possibly underutilized prior to the COVID situation. Um, but during that lockdown, there was this explosion of activity online um, and we want to make sure that we keep up with that development and encourage it. But there's no, um, there's no downplaying of the importance of the, of the real thing or the live event or however you want to describe it. The actual physical book or the physical artwork is still important to us. Thanks, Kath. Richard, I'm coming back to you for a question about arts grants. This comment is saying our application for arts continuity was declined, but then we received an email from Creative New Zealand to apply for the next phase of support from CNZ. Just a bit confused, could you please clarify a different phase of the same project can be made for arts grants? Or did CNZ mean its next funding phase or phase of support generally? Thanks, Delina. That's a good question. And some of that might be around the terminology that we've been using. So um, the emergency response program we called phase one of the delivery of what we were able to do during that emergency program. Um, 
And phase two is what we're doing for now with the new um, annual program for this financial year. Um, and I suppose the other possible confusion is around the word project. Um, so a project is what you apply for to us and a project can be a phase of a wider project that someone's um, developing. So it could be that you had come to us to apply for um, the development of a work and that's one part of your project. You've come to us, so that's called a project internally. Um, but you might then want to come to us for the delivery of that project. Uh, and that is considered a separate project. So yes, you could come in for that. But you can't come in for the same project that you had applied to us for. Hopefully that clarifies it. If it doesn't, let us know and we'll make it really clear in the FAQs. Thank you, Richard. A question here, can you apply for the general arts grant and then the annual arts grant? i.e. the arts grant for a development phase and then an annual arts grant for the large event actual costs? Um, so you need to make a choice um, from the 3rd of August whether you want to go for up to 75k through an arts grant um, and then potentially another one for another 75k because you can come in twice um, or you need to go for the annual arts grant um, which is up to 150k if you're unsuccessful, as Kath said, for that uh, annual arts grant, then I think the decision date for um, the annual arts grants is in November. So you can probably just come into phase four in December for an arts grant um, or the four rounds in 2021. So you need to choose right. what you want to do for the first part of this year. Yeah. So you couldn't, basically, I think you can't come in for 75 and then go for 150. For an right. annual arts grant the maximum you'll be able to receive either from the annual arts grant or two arts grants in a calendar year is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars just that's right for, yeah those who are want, wanting to create giant events or projects there's a comment here about um, the adaptation and capability funds just a little bit disappointed that they're only accessible to client investment client organizations because emerging organizations are also more likely to require these types of funds. Is there any movement on this in terms of those particular opportunities being available to others? Um, maybe I can answer that. So as Richard said before, we encourage those types of proposals through our arts grants program as well. So if you're not an investment client, you can still apply through arts grants or indeed annual arts grants, should you be eligible for projects to innovate, to, to digitalize your work or digitize your work, to distribute your work digitally. Those things are still eligible. So hopefully that answers that question. Thank you, Kath. And another question, which I might direct to you, Richard, if you're applying for the annual arts grant, will you have had to acquit all your existing CNZ grants by the start date? Um, yes, easy answer to that, Dolina. Uh, so uh, four grants from 2017 to 2019, successfully acquitted as met or exceeded expectations uh, from when you apply, so from the 3rd of August. Right. Um, the, I've also asked, can the applicant choose the start date for the 12 months to yeah. align with their existing plans? Hmm. Yeah, so the reason we've um, we've said that people um, can do a 12-month period of activity delivered within 15 months is that we're conscious that some organisations may want to do a calendar year of 2021 um, so they can apply and then know that they've got that success of um, funding and they can plan and then deliver their 12 months because obviously we need to give people a chance to plan um, for their delivery knowing that they've got support from us. Thank you. A question's come in regarding the 200 limit cap. If you've started an application in the portal, will you be notified if the 200 limit is starting to be exhausted? Um, um, yeah, Richard, you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think so. Um, we are just thinking about in the background the technology of what's possible um, around that. But I think 
what we want to have is really great quality applications coming in at the right time. And my fear is that if we start to tell people your chance is about to run out, then people will rush their application uh, and not actually do the greatest application that they can. Um, so our sense is that we will probably not do that so that this, the first 200 will come in. What we will do though, is to let those people know who have got an open application still existing, know that that um, has closed. And depending when that is, because it may be before the closing date, um, we'll let them know that, um, that they should uh, prepare to submit a new application and as soon as we open the next round. Still a tiny bit of thinking to doing around that, Delina, but that's the general thinking that we're going at the moment. Okay, great. And just remem remembering with the eight rounds, the yeah. next application open date shouldn't be too far away if that it's one actually, closes. Yeah, actually before the next one closes. So there's a week overlap. Um, when we open, we for example, in um, August the 3rd, we open for four weeks. Uh, in three weeks, the second round will open. So there is an overlap so that people can either copy their application across or they're thinking, okay, I'm gathering all my material. I'm nearly ready. Um, I can go actually for round two or round three um, before the other one closes. Great, thank you. Now, if your arts application, arts grant application is declined, are you able to submit it again? No, um, once a project is declined, it's declined, but you can come in for a second project um, of a different kind. So two applications are available, but once it's been assessed and declined, um, I'm afraid that's the end of that project, but you can come in for a new project um, as part of your two, um, two limit for the eight rounds. Thank you. And a question for you, Kath, I think we, we keep coming back to this point about the limited number of applications. Um, how will you ensure that successful applications are spread equitably across art forms? Mm. So we've touched briefly on that earlier, but also just a, a comment that, for example, the likes of dance, which didn't have huge numbers in the arts continuity grant. Mm. Yeah, well, it varied actually from round to round, but that was a really interesting experience for us because um, in terms of the overall support, um, if you looked at the, the whole stat list for arts continuity grants, it was actually pretty good across all the art forms. It, it, it didn't mean that in every round there was an equal distribution and we don't want to preempt that either, um, but we will be keeping an eye on the um, success rate and also the numbers coming through. So if we feel that we needed to boost or encourage or ask for more applications in a particular art form, we will do that. But my sense is that we're not going to have a shortage um, of demand, um, but it, it doesn't mean that every, every one of those eight rounds will have an equal distribution across all the art forms. But I might throw to Richard here because actually in the arts continuity, it worked out pretty good, didn't it, Richard? I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't a kind of um, a big deficit in any particular round. No, I'd say um, no, it was fairly equitable from what we're used to experiencing. I think the one thing that we noted in the early parts of arts continuity when we were in lockdown level um, four and three, obviously participation was, was very um, difficult to achieve. And so, <coughs> and dance and some of the performing arts um, art forms weren't able to apply in that first element because they couldn't deliver what they wanted to. But um, as soon as we came out of that, there was much more balanced um, equity from that um, period in the last probably four rounds or so. Uh, I think if you look across the cumulative stats, it it's actually sits very well. Yeah, and we could look at publishing those as well so people can see. I mean, I think we have actually- They're available on our website. So you mm. can go in there and you can see um, not only which art forms, but um, also um, the, the geographic spread, um, which was really good as well. Great, thank you, Kath. There's been another comment, comment that or question that has come in about how is applying a limit of 200 applications accessible and align with your diversity policy? Was a multi-stage process considered? Yeah, um, 
Well, we, we are committed to accessible um, accessibility and diversity. Um, it's part of our strategic outcomes and the purposes of our grants programs reflect that. So we are actively seeking um, proposals which deliver to the broadest possible range of both art form, genre, artist and audience. So that, that's my initial statement there. Um, in terms of the cap on numbers, in the past, we were processing something like 1,400 or so applications per year. Um, and during the lockdown period, during our emergency response, those numbers tripled. That's unsustainable. So we need to manage our budget now. We've spent down our reserves and we've set the budget for the year. So we know how much money we want to invest. And we also know that that relate, what we've worked out is that that means we can accept about 1600, we can accept about 1600 proposals. So that's more than what we were previously doing. And we've also put a lot more money in. So there's something like a 55% increase in our budget to both arts grants, annual arts grants in our toy arohi overall from what we were previously spending. So all I can say in answer to that question is yes, we've imposed some limits. Um, and that is to enable us to turn those, pro those um, processes around as quickly as, as, we as we can. So we're offering that as a benefit, but the downside is we have to say that's how many we can do at a time that quickly. So um, more money, um, more grants, more, more proposals able to be accepted than in the past. So we're trying as hard as we can to respond to that increased demand, but we don't have an unlimited supply of money. Thanks, Kath. I think again, as I, as I um, spoke about earlier, perhaps it's up to all of us out there, what can we do to help advocate for those who may not have the ability to easily put in these applications? What support and advocacy can we do around these opportunities and helping people get their applications in quickly? A question which I think the answer will be yes, but for you, Richard, would music ensembles who are creating new works be considered for an arts grant? Yes. Thank we you. regularly um, fund ensembles who want to commission new work, um, so very happy to receive that. Thank you. I've got a question, a statement here that 71% of the people surveyed from the Sunday Times, which many of you may have seen this, voted artists as the number one least essential worker. What does Creative New Zealand think about this? What is Creative New Zealand's role in changing that perception? Mm. Um, I might throw to you, Kath, because I know that there was a dedicated effort by Creative New Zealand's advocacy team with the Thankful for Art project to start to work towards raising the visibility and value of the arts. Okay, so um, I haven't seen that poll and I'm very disappointed to hear that. Um, and, and also, I would also say that that's very inconsistent with our regular research that we do once every three years. Um, it's a, a, a project called New Zealanders in the Arts, and we're about to do another edition of that research um, in September this year. Um, but in every edition of that research, um, the answers have come back that New Zealanders are highly supportive of artists and really value arts in their communities. So. Um, I, I guess I would be asking what the sample was um, and, and be querying some of the, um, the uh, methodology around that research because it's not consistent with our own finding. However, we do agree that advocacy is a very important part of our um, work. It's one of our deliverables. And this forum today isn't about that, it's about our investment. So um, there is an advocacy plan for our second phase response, but I don't have that detail with me for today, but we can easily look at providing that and also maybe even running another um, HUI, online HUI about that particular project. Great, thank you, Kath. I've got a question, again, I'll, I'll ask you this one, Kath, about the Creative Communities Scheme. 
what is the level of funding going into the creative community scheme and what are the guidelines for these particular grants? Okay, so I might throw to Liz for the um, for the funding level because I know we've, we're just about to increase that. Um, so I don't want to say the wrong number. Liz, can you chip in there? Yeah, sure. The annual amount for funding is four million, just shy of $4 million from Creative New Zealand out to all the territorial authorities and local authorities. Plus there has been an additional one-off in this recent budget of $2 million, which is um, to assist with the COVID-19 response. So that's the level of funding on their cap. Thank you. So the second part of the question was about the guidelines. Um, so what we do is we contract this, we devolve this funding to local authorities, 67 of them. Um, so they distribute, assess and administer the funds. But we set the high level um, purposes that we want to achieve. And these are about not only about making artists being able to make work, but communities engaging in the arts. So there's a huge diversity of funding that goes out via that scheme. Um, and that's usually reported on annually. Um, so the best source of information about where that money goes um, and to what benefit is via our annual report. Um, and there'll be a new annual report later this year. It comes out usually in December. Great, thank you, Kath. There's a question here. How can I get funding for a new creative space? I'm not sure if that means a physical space but I, I'm guessing Richard would would an, would an arts grant be a eligible for funding um, mm. basis? Not for infrastructure costs. Um, I'm afraid we we don't support those. Uh, we support projects that might happen in that space. Um, so we might consider an application to come up with a plan of how to. Um, how to uh, think about developing that space um, and, a, and a kind of capacity a capability way, but we wouldn't um, be able to fund bricks and mortar uh, to actually create or buy the space. Uh, we do provide some support for ongoing costs for the um, phase of a project though. So, um, you know, rent for um, a dance studio for the, the period of a project, for example, we, we do cover. Um, but it has to be project related rather than general ongoing infrastructure. Thank you. I have a question for you, Kath, regarding the Ngātoi Arohe Fund. Can a package of arts projects be put forward to achieve an identified regional arts goal? Would this fund be able to help fund regional arts research and production of an industry-led creative action plan? Hmm. I think that um, if that was the sole purpose of the grant, it might not fit the criteria because we are looking for the delivery of work to audiences with this fund. Um, but if a research and development process was required as part of that delivery, then yes, we'd be interested in, in, in looking at that as part of the overall investment. But I think what we're really interested in is is activity in those regions using local artists for local audiences. So a public outcome at some point would probably be really important to us. Thank you, Kath. Richard, a question for you about the arts grants or well, the assessment process. Does Creative New Zealand publish your assessment criteria for each grant or is this expressed in the outcomes that you want to see from the projects? Oh, thanks, Delina. Um, we certainly do. We're really committed to being very transparent about our assessment process. So for every fund that we have, we have a web page um, on our website that talks about the opportunity, uh, the eligibility criteria, specifics around what's um, able to be applied for, uh, and the way in which it's going to be assessed. So for arts grants and annual arts grants, Arohi, um, all of those, we will have program purpose. Um, which people need to speak to within their application. Uh, we also ask people to speak to how they'll deliver to our strategic outcomes, uh, which are listed inside those, um, uh, those web pages. 
and uh, we have specific criteria that we set um, that we assess to. Generally, it's around the idea, uh, the viability, and the strategic fit. Uh, and we have um, different bullet points under each of those about uh, how our assessors will specifically um, assess your application. And then within the questions uh, that we ask you within uh, the portal, um, there are specific questions which will relate to the assessment criteria. Um, so it should be very nicely matched up that whatever you're talking about and the questions that we ask are very clearly able to be assessed. Um, and there's a, a point scoring against each of those criteria that we set. Um, and that is what generates the score for your application. All of those are really obviously um, available on our web pages though. Thank you, Richard. And another question's come in, if less than 200 projects are approved in any round, will this increase the cap for the following round? I think perhaps, Richard, for anyone who's tuned in a bit later, could you please re-explain the arts grant, uh, the, the how many rounds per yeah. year and, how, and the, talk about the cap a little bit? Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so the one big change we're making to arts grants is to have much faster decision making. Uh, than our general um, arts grants offer, which was um, twice a year with two mini rounds for up to 10K and 10 to 75. Um, we listened to the sector and, and what was successful with arts continuity grants. Um, we weren't able to work as quickly as we did um, given our capacity, but um, we've introduced eight rounds for arts grants um, between August 2020 and June 2021. Um, the programs will be open, the rounds will be open for about four weeks uh, each, and then a decision will be made uh, three weeks after the um, closing date. So much faster than we've ever done before. But in order to do that as speedily as we want to, um, we are capping the number of applications that we can take, which is 200 per round. Um, that takes into account the, um, the funding team and the external assessors and what they're able to do in that period of time. So. Um, in the very unlikely event that we have uh, less than 200 uh, applications in a round, um, that little quota won't go across to the next round. We'll stay strictly with 200 per, um, per round. Thank you. And, and if I could just add something there, Delina, sorry to butt in, but just because we're accepting 200 per round doesn't mean that 200 are going to be funded, mm. unfortunately. So I just want to make that really clear as well. It's not a guarantee of funding. That's just how many we can process in a three week period. Thank you, Kath. A question for you, Kath. Can venues apply for Creative New Zealand funding if they have no other source of income? What are the options for our venues? Um, well, traditionally, we if we're talking about performing arts venues or galleries, um, we haven't had a fund for, for supporting venues because most of them are owned or supported by local authorities um, as part of their ongoing responsibility for arts and well-being in their area. And we don't have the resources to fund ongoing costs for that built infra infrastructure, unfortunately. We just can't afford it. So um, the closest we can get to this is this new Ngātoi Arohi Fund where we're interested in getting proposals that could be from venues. So as long as it delivers to the outcomes and the purposes of that fund, a venue is just as likely to be successful if they if they meet all the criteria that you know I've described um, as anybody else, because they can usually provide some of this activity that we're talking about. So we're not discounting that venues might be eligible as part of those proposals. But we're not saying that we're able to support ongoing costs for venues um, forever because we, we just can't. Thank you, Kath. And here's a question for you, Kath, and perhaps also Liz. If an arts organisation needs support to create a strategy on how to navigate and develop their pathway through Creative New Zealand grants funding, does Creative New Zealand offer that support through a person or a programme? No, we don't, well, we don't offer funding for that, um, um, but we provide all the information that you need to be able to do that. 
And we do that in a variety of ways. One of those is what we're doing right now. Um, the other is our website and our portal, which has a lot of information about how to apply, what you can apply for. Um, and then we also have a team of advisors, um, both in funding services and in investment services, who can help answer your questions. What we don't do is do your application for you for obvious reasons, but we provide you with as much information as we can to help you put your best foot forward. Thank you. And I've just, for a final question, as we're coming up to the end of our session today, uh, has Creative New Zealand worked with MCH to develop this next phase of funding support, i.e. the 12 month plan, so that it works with programs that MCH will deliver? That's a really, really good question. Um, we've been um, working very closely with the Ministry on the total package for um, um, arts and cultural recovery that the government has announced. They're still working through the design of those programs. So we can't really offer any information in this session about um, who and how um, and, and when because I just don't have that information. On the other hand, we have had to move quite quickly to announce our own investment for this next 12 month period. So we are working very closely with the ministry to, to ensure that there isn't either duplication or um, mixed messages. So they are completely aware of what we're offering um, because that, you know, we, we have to provide them with that information. So they'll be taking that into account as they progress the design of those other support packages. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of our questions today from the comments from everyone out there. Thank you very much to everyone who's joined us on Facebook Live and YouTube. And a huge thank you to our panelists. I'd just like to ask if anyone has any closing thoughts that they'd like to share, Richard, Liz or Kath, if there's anything that you'd like to add just, just to close up our hui this morning. Um, if I may, Dolina, I did have one thing I was going to just touch on that I suspect people will have questions about, which is international projects. Um, international projects are welcome um, if you're applying for um, arts grants. Um, the key thing to understand is, you know, that they can happen regardless of whether a human has to get on, a, on an aeroplane at the current time. So we are doing, we will make it really clear when we open the fund, um, how we will manage that um, borders issue, um, but it's very likely that um, that we will accept proposals for international um, projects, but that the international travel aspect um, will be up to the period of time of when um, decisions are made around the borders controls that are in place. But as we know, um, you know, projects are taking place all over the world in different ways. Um, works of art can still get on a plane, whilst a, sadly a curator can't. Um, that we've had some installations uh, carried out over Skype and things like that. So uh, we don't want people to feel that that, that area is a, is a closed um, book for us at the moment. Um, we will probably have to react as the nation reacts according to um, the border controls. But uh, I know that there is some questions that will come to us around international. So I just wanted to cover that off now, Delina. Thank you. Liz, did you have anything? Well, I think we'll close our hui there today. Just a reminder for our Māori and Pacifica community, there will be... Was that someone who had a... No, you're all good. All good? Yeah. Thank you. Just, I was uh, sending out a reminder for the Māori and Pacifica community to join the Creative New Zealand Zono this Thursday at 11 a.m. and Azui on Friday at 11 a.m where you will be able to meet with Māori and Pacifica Arts Advisors and ask any more questions or share any thoughts about the funding opportunities. Please also do see the PANS website or the Creative New Zealand website or Facebook page for more information about the Zono. As Richard, Liz and Kath have stated, the first applications open on August the 3rd. Please do not hesitate to contact the Creative New Zealand team if you have any questions and keep an eye on the frequently asked questions on their website 
they will go back through and look to see if there's any questions that we have missed today and they'll work to include and answer those on their FAQs. PANS and Auckland Live will also be continuing with our monthly online HUI series and we will let you know when we are next coming back with a HUI. So once again, thank you very much to everyone who has joined us today. Thank you so much to Richard, Liz and Kath for all the information that you have shared with us and to our team behind the scenes from Creative New Zealand, PANS, Auckland Live and the platform interpreting New Zealand Sign Language Interpreters. Thank you very much for your contribution to today's hui. So to close today, I will just close our session with a karakia. Me karakia tato. Kia hora te marino. Kia whakapapa paunamu te moana. Kia tere te kai rohi rohi i mua i tō huarahi. Thank you very much for joining us today. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou katoa.